lot of magic in the world. I think people are desperately searching for some miracles in their life. I cannot forget the life of this amazing Mohawk who died an amazing death on Holy Wednesday in 1680. It's really quite moving to come back to these documents dated 1680. This, it's, it's a piece of history. That's a clip from the documentary on the life of Kateria Tekawitha, the young Mohawk woman whom Pope Benedict named a saint last year because of her life devoted to the Creator. Our next two guests are also members of the Mohawk First Nation with inspiring stories of their own. In 2010, Elder Leona Moses presented Queen Elizabeth with a historic Bible during the Queen's visit to Canada. She also visited Chief Teresa Spence during her 44-day hunger strike. Jonathan Maracle is an internationally recognized Mohawk musician who performs and speaks regularly in First Nation communities. Leona and Jonathan, welcome to Context. Thank you. Thank you very much. Leona, you traveled to Rome for that ceremony with, with St. Katharita. What did it mean to you? Well, there are actually 21 of us that left from Six Nations uh, to go. And as soon as we heard, we had already visited the Mohawk Valley where she was born and where many of her miracles happened. So when we went to Rome, it was an amazing trip. And they had huge pictures of all of the saints that were being sainted that day in the front. The Pope was sitting there, and it was a magnificent service. We heard earlier about the doctrine of dominance that wiped out the personhood, that this was the church, Catholic church doctrine. That's right. And yet Katerina was a saint who 600 years ago said to the doctrine, no, I too worship the creator. I too am a follower of Jesus, but I don't do it in your European way. I do it in my way. That's right. Very tender relationship between Aboriginal Christianity. And I see that when I read about you giving the queen a Bible. Tell me about this. I found a Queen Elizabeth and the Duke, a very, very charming, personable people, uh, very meticulous. And actually, the Six Nations people have been close to royalty um, ever since, well, in 1710, four of our chiefs left um, to go to England to visit Queen Anne. She treated them equally. She presented them with many gifts, and she had them driven up and down the streets of London and some of her great coaches. And the chiefs, in turn, they gave her um, a wampum belt, and it told the history of the formation of the Five Nations Confederacy. And they asked Queen Anne for a chapel and a missionary, and she granted their wish. That was when the first um, Anglican or Episcopal church in the United States uh, was built in the, right in the Mohawk village of, of the Mohawk people. We want to go to the audience because there's been a lot of talk in the break about bringing Christianity into idol no more. I, I just want to hear from, uh, from Catherine in the audience. I'm not brought up in the church. I'm not brought up in, through Christianity. I was brought up in the traditional way. And, Sitting in the sitting in the audience, hearing it, it was felt like, as an audience member, I was labeled under the church, and that's where some of the discussion came is to specifically say there are groups that follow the Christian Christianity under the church, but there is also a bigger population that is traditional, and there are those too that follow both that are comfortable with both, but what we felt was there needed to be more clarity of it's not just Christianity that's following. It's not just the church people that are in the idol no more, but it's the fact that idol no more brings all those groups together, brings all those people out to work together hand in hand. Jonathan, I want to ask what you think. I think probably some of the most interesting things that I've found in the last bunch of years as I've traveled is the uh, honor that our people, First Nations people, give to the Creator. 
And uh, like on the East Coast, they call him Nisi Gisam, the unmade maker. The Ojibwe call him Manoshin Gishemanitu, the beautiful great one. The Mohawk call him Sungwayat Diso, he who holds the heavens. Um, I really believe that when we are at peace with our creator, it's the same one. I really believe that the teachings are teachings of respect and honor. And idle no more is a very, very important thing that brings, it's a movement that brings awareness to the struggles that our people have had for so many hundreds of years that have been hidden, hidden struggles. There was a, a community in New Brunswick, a city of around 42,000 people that had six suicides. And Canada looked at that and said, this is like a national epidemic. And at the very same time, one of our communities in the north had 16 suicides that only had 2,000 people. That's an epidemic. Mm. That's what Idle No More is about. It's about mothers. It's about children. It's about family that can love one another and begin to serve one another and see our communities become strong. It's when we don't look at a Christian and think, well, there's something wrong with them because they did this to us. But the fact is, is that was men who were working under the name of Christianity, building men's kingdoms. And my heart is that the kingdom that I want to build is one of love, one of respect, one of honor, one that will bring hope to our children. Leona, you um, are an elder. Does Christianity fit into Idol No More? It definitely does, because I, I feel, uh, as our brother stated, that there is only one God, and there is only one Creator, and it doesn't really matter how you wish to praise Him, whether you want to kneel or sit, or stand, or hold your hands in the air. Or it drum. doesn't really make any difference as long as, and we are, we're all praying to the very same great spirit. Now, I know that Native people, um, it is our, our job to take care of the earth. And that's really, really important. It's one of the most important issues. If we want to keep um, civilization going, uh, that is something that our young people um, have, to, have to do. They're going to have to face that in their future. And the nucleus of, of every, every, any civilization is the family. Families, um, and that is why I turn back to Christianity. I feel that the Bible lays down a pattern in which uh, it tells us how to live. And if we can obey, even the Ten Commandments, it's, it's going to make a good life for us. A tribe long, long before any tribe. That's right. What it was first covenanted with. Jonathan, you're going to play for us. Tell us about this song, and then would you just pick it up from there? I'm going to play one of the first songs that I played uh, when I first understood who the Creator really was to me. And... Um, you know, I, I didn't grow up as a traditional, and unfortunately, for some time, I was taught that the traditional way was the wrong way. And it took me many years to understand that it was a good way, and that the very things that are in the Bible that teach us the good things in the Bible, those same teachings in their own way come to our people through the teachings, the good teachings of the great law and those different Things. I just found that when I met Christ, he made me a better Mohawk. He brought me to another place for my own personal experience, brought me to a better place. Okay, I want to say thank you both for joining us. And Jonathan, I'm going to ask you to get ready now. And we're going to um, do something a little different here this time. Coming up, we're going to close with some thoughts on the challenge posed by Idle No More. We're going to hear from some young people as well. But now, please welcome uh, Jonathan Maracle. Hey ho, ah, 
Some of the kids leading the round dance with Idle No More, they came right into the studio today and we also looked at the Aboriginal church's role in the issues surrounding Idle No More. Idle No More is a movement that points out profound disappointment. It's a call for restoration and relationship. That's what's at the heart of this unrest. It's something about which the Christian story has much to contribute. To hear Aboriginal leaders challenge us to be in covenant with them shakes us up. Some in Canada might not even know an Aboriginal person, let alone consider they're part of a covenant with them. The Creator's story includes the challenge that above all things, we are to put on actions of love in all our affairs. And that's not mere sentiment. That would be a patient and deliberate game changer in Canada's long-standing repair work with its Aboriginal founders. If you want to understand more about the issues discussed today, go to our Context website at contextwithlorna.com. And for all of us, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching. Join us next week as we explore life beyond the headlines. There's a song the song of the spirit